get some whoop whoops. That's a good time. Welcome to our two o'clock hour at the Cooking for the Holidays. Uh, we have a fun little something for you to end today off here. It'll feel what is to come for you. I don't know if Santa's making an appearance today. I hope so. I was hoping to talk to the guy. Before I introduce our chef, I'm going to give a warm thank you to Renewal Remodels and Additions. They provided this beautiful kitchen that you see before you. The chefs are doing their thing all weekend here. And also Bates Technical College, which you will see all around. They got their cameras, and they're going to get all the good shots to put on the screen over here. So anytime we talk about simmering, chopping, colors, it'll pop up over there magically. And you'll feel like you're here experiencing it for yourself. Because that's what it's all about, guys. And with all that said, I'm going to go ahead. Chef is doing his thing. He's setting up. But we're going to give a warm welcome to Chef Ta Sean Tibbetts. <laughs> Tibbetts at Fern Hill. I got, like, tongue twisters this weekend, apparently. Welcome, Chef. Hey, thank you. Oh, there we go. i got to get real closer. Real Thanks, close. everybody, for being here. Appreciate you. I uh, closed my restaurant a little early so I can come say what's up to uh, you at this wonderful Tacoma Thank Dome. you, Chef. You're welcome. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're doing today. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a uh, chicken cordon bleu. A lot of folks uh, don't know how to do those properly, so I'm going to teach you how to do them. Uh, it's real simple, real easy. Uh, start to finish, we're looking at about a half hour. Uh, I'll be uh, building it from scratch, baking it, and then I'll make a uh, beurre blanc, which is a buttercream. It's also French, uh, just to pour over the top. Uh, and I'll be mixing that with a little Dijon, so it'll give a little, uh, uh, a lot of flavor there. So, um, yeah. All in a half hour? Yeah, 35 minutes. All right. Finish. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. I'm looking I'll, forward I'll stretch to it. it out till 5 p.m. <laughs> now, last year, I just want to be honest with you. I'll just go off topic here. Nothing worked. It was, it was fun. We had no water. We had no stove. We had to use a plug-in that was over here, but. I think we fixed the problem because I did cheesecake last year, and I was scared to plug in my my mixer because I didn't want to blow the power of the Tacoma Dome. So That is the joy of pop-up events. You just never know what's going to happen. Right. So my name is Sean Tibbetts. I own Tibbetts at Fern Hill. Uh, my address is 8237 South Park. I am in Tacoma. Um, hashtags to follow, Tibbetts Fern Hill. Um, both for Instagram and Facebook, and I am grateful to be here. Uh, this young lady right here, this is Chris Hay. <laughs> She's writing a cookbook. She's here to watch me. It's so much pressure. Hi, Chris. Chris made a wonderful, uh, was it Was it a peach barbecue? Amazing. She kept asking me if I wanted it. I'm like, nope, I can't eat nothing. <laughs> can't eat nothing yet. So, awesome. It's really great, actually. All weekend long, we see chefs supporting one another. So oftentimes, chef will be in the audience waiting for their turn, hanging out to just root for the other chefs. It's a very close community we have here. Yeah. All right. So first thing we're going to get started is everything that I got today, you can get at a normal store. Any store you want. Safeway, Fred Meyer, QFC, uh, whichever one. You don't have to go to a high-end retailer to buy any of these products to make what I'm about to make. So the only thing you're going to need is a few components. Um, also, when I do this dish, if you want to take notes on how to make it gluten-free, when I start going into the process, start writing down what ingredients you need to make it a gluten-free dish. I didn't want to make both of them because I'm doing the same item. So what we're going to start with right now is going to start with a beurre blanc, which is a buttercream. Um, it's a tough sauce because it can break, and when it breaks, it's no good. So... Um, but it's fun. It's tasty. You can uh, add a lot of other components to make it taste different. Um, but right now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn on our uh, stove here. So, Chef, how do you know if the sauce has broken? I, I will I will teach you that, too, I as we go it. on. So this is just your basic white wine that you can buy. Um, I'm going to add about one cup of this white wine. So it is a uh, pure bright Chardonnay 2021. So it doesn't matter what white wine Chardonnay you're going to use. It all has flavor. Uh, it just depends on your end result. Um, typically on this, you would use uh, shallots, but I'm just going to use a regular white onion because a lot of folks usually tend to go for the white onion, um, and they don't want to have to buy one more ingredient. So we're just going to go ahead and get started on that. So 
So when it comes to onions and shallots, what is the difference difference in flavor? Uh, shallots produce a lot more flavor. Uh, they're from the uh, garlic family, where onions um, tend not to. So, I mean, I, I would typically use shallots, but I want to show you folks when you don't have to um, use shallots. And you can just use regular onion. Oh, well, we got a question, Chef. We're trying to figure out what, is what is a shallot? Uh, shallot is a small red. It, it kind of looks like a red onion, So, but it's not. It's small. She says, I don't cook. So while that's heating up, we're going to go ahead and get our chicken breasts here. So keep in mind that chicken is one of the most, you know, I don't want to use the term, but it's the most deadliest thing in a kitchen because you get a lot of uh, things if you don't do chicken right. Um, So for me, I always, always don't mess around when it comes to raw chicken. Um, Beef, you just got to cook that fully, though, but chicken has so many... uh, things that can go wrong that's why i don't mess around with it and i just got this picked this up at safeway today so um like i said you can get anything at any store you want um and that is a big one that is actually a a, called a cabone chicken that's a beast yeah so it's a little bigger than your regular chicken but that's the uh the brand of chicken how many of you folks live here in tacoma Got some hands. Three, huh? <laughs> Sweet. Where did everybody come from? Graham Woo! We got Graham Pride out Graham, here. Graham, huh? <laughs> I like Graham. <laughs> you know, funny story is my family uh, used to uh, own a lot of the property out there in uh, Fredrickson and Graham area. Um, but then we sold to uh, Harold LeMay Sr., Um, And now we don't. (laughs) So, no, no. I I live in South Tacoma, so I'm poor. So this is the chicken right here. I don't know if you guys can see all that. We can, yeah. We got a good shot of it. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the chicken. And you don't want to cut it all the way through. Just want a nice cut. And then if they're this big, I like to cut them in half, so we're going to make two. So, Chef, tell us a little bit about your restaurant. Uh, My restaurant has been open almost seven years. Um, I opened in 2017, and the biggest thing for me was I was able to do it with nothing but two campfire burners in an oven. So I don't have a kitchen at my restaurant. Um, I typically do lunch, brunch, and then sometimes I'll do specialty dinners. But um, um, right now I'm back to a brunch menu uh, four days a week. I only work uh, four, well, I'm only open three hours a day. And people ask me, why are you only open three hours a day? Well, it's because I don't have any debt. It's my hobby, my passion. I go to work to feed people, to burn some energy and have some fun. For me, it's never been about anything other than passion. So that's that's my restaurant. I'm a reservation-only restaurant, so the only way you get in is you have to make a reservation. And all you got to do is call me at the the restaurant, leave a message. Um, I'll call you back and confirm it. Um, These last couple years, I've won some... uh, some major accolades, which I, I don't even know how folks find me. <laughs> Food and Wine Magazine gave me top six brunches in the world. I'm like, who does that? Why? <laughs> There's so many other better restaurants out there than mine. Uh, your food is phenomenal. If anyone hasn't been, it is, it's dreamy. And you don't have a bunch of five-star reviews for nothing, Chef. Well, you know, for me, it's about the people. About the quality of food, and that's what I'm grateful for. So when you're at home... When you're making certain things, like today we're going to be doing this chicken uh, cordon bleu, um, one thing you want to do is make sure we talked about the chicken and how the uh, the hazards it has. 
So one of the biggest things I do is I'm always safety first. So when I get like a, a raw piece of chicken or a raw piece of pork, I will put a piece of plastic over it so it doesn't splash all over all your kitchen and the other components. So you want to make sure you're safe there um, on that. That way um, um, cross-contamination doesn't happen. So the way you get started on this, while well, this is boiling, is I always start with the, uh, the pointy side at first, and I'll just push out the chicken. Once the chicken is all pushed out, I will move to the flat side, and I will start pounding. And all I'm trying to do is stretch this meat out as far as I can, so that way when I pound, I have a nice super flat piece and that I can fold and fill because we don't want any leaks in the, uh, in the product or else our cheese melts and... Now, Chef, let's say someone doesn't have a meat tenderizer at home. Could they use something else? Yeah, I mean, I've used my, uh, when I'm at work sometimes and I can't find it, I will use the butt of my knife, pound it. You could take a pan, a small pan, and pound it out. Just, if you're going to do it, have the pan and just use it at an angle. Don't put it in your driveway and drive over it. <laughs> okay? I Bad mean, idea. Yes. Food safety, guys. Yes. So now that our chicken is pounded out, we can see how flat that is now. And remember, if anyone has any questions at any point in time, please feel free to raise your hand. I will come over with the mic so Chef can hear you. Oh, I have a question. Pan. A rolling pan? With yeah. a, a rolling pin to tenderize? You know, a rolling pin a rolling pin would work. The only problem that, that you're gonna have is that you might not be consistent when you roll it. You know, um, I don't know, I've never tried it. I should try that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean you're a better Give chef a than shot. me. You know, I've worked in forty restaurants in twenty seven years. I never went to culinary school. I'm a self taught kid from Fern Hill. I you love know, it. So that's 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 me. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, give it a shot. Use what you have in the kitchen, guys. Yes, you do. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get our ham and our cheese. So this is just any kind of ham you want to use. So like I'll take this ham here. And you can buy the store bought pre sliced stuff, you can uh, fold it up, the super sliced stuff. I don't know, remember what the brand is called, but you can buy that. Me, I've always been for quality, so I always buy the, the, the thick cut stuff, the hamplers, um, stuff like that, because I, I want the uh, the girth to stick out in the, uh, the cordon bleu. Chef, is this something that you serve during the holidays, or? No. What's your go-to during the holidays? Me? Yeah. yeah whatever people want. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm so, I've worked, and I'll be honest with you, I worked on a lot of different uh, uh, food cultures mm -hmm. when I worked. You know, uh, Filipino, Asian, um, um, Latin. I've worked in so many different cultures that I learned to adapt to them and do kind of what they do and then, um, I really try not to Americanize their products, you know, but this is French cooking, you know, and I learned this a long time ago. I love it. We have a question here. You're going to be doing something with like indigenous cooking in the future? Is I already right? am. Are I've already started that. Oh yeah. Right now I've got my uh, smoked salmon quiche and at the restaurant and I have fry bread. So my Alaska native fry bread and, uh, my menu is www.tibbetsfernhill.com. Uh, and you can see the menu, what it has on it. Um, I took the, it's called the uh, Mother Earth, Father Sky, um, because that's from Mother Earth, and then, you know, the sky grows the, the product. The earth raises it. So it's one of those things, but it's really tasty, and I'm using Adam's mushrooms for it. 
So it's uh, it's Adams. real, yeah. So it's real good. And I'm, I need some coffee. Is my coffee lady here yet? <laughs> oh yes, I'm ready. As a matter of fact, she was waiting patiently. She's swooping in. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is <laughs> my friend and my coffee purveyor. Let's give it up. Thank you. We couldn't do it without you. So this is uh, Island Coffee Company. They have a booth here at the Tacoma Dome. These are personal friends of mine. I found them at a farmer's market. And if you come try this coffee, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm a fan. So I didn't know they were here. I was like, I need coffee. Show up. What booth number are you? 509. Get your roasted bean fix. Thank you. It's kind of nice when you get free coffee. You know? I, I try to get some sandwiches from these ladies. They were nice. They were like, hey, get a knife. We'll give you a bite. We have another question here, Chef. Hi, Chef. Um, what do you do when you deal with folks that need vegetarian or vegan options? When you leave a message on my voicemail, just let me know that you're vegetarian or vegan, mm -hmm. what your favorite vegetables are, and then I will accommodate that. Like, I get a lot of gluten intolerant folks that come in, which, which we live in that day and age, um, and I get it, so... I just let them know when they make a reservation to let me know there's a gluten intolerant. I'll call them back. We'll figure something for them to eat out. Then they're excited because I want to be like a personal chef. I'm just not a restaurant you go to, open a menu. Oh, they don't have anything, you know, and so. We have one more question. Go ahead. So often you go to a restaurant, and if you're ve vegetarian or vegan, they'll say, well, we have salads. Right. Can you? Can you yeah. be, I imagine you're much more creative. Can you give you an know, example? You know, I, I am, and I do have some vegetarian options already on my menu. My Mother Earth, Father Sky, I could just leave the bacon jam out, mm -hmm. and I can fry the, uh, the uh, fry bread in canola oil, because I use canola oil at my restaurant instead of vegetable oil, because it's better for you. I fry it in that instead of the bacon fat, because if you order the regular Mother Earth, Father Sky, it's going to be fried in bacon fat, because my culture, we use whale oil, which is called muktuk. And it doesn't taste good. Health department ain't going to allow me to serve whale oil. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just use my bacon fats for my oils, and it works. So, And we use small amounts of oil. I don't have a deep fryer at my restaurant, so it's one of those things that when I do fry something, it's clean, it's crisp, and uh, it's good. That sounds like maybe the best fry bread ever. We have a question here. We have a couple questions, so be patient with me, Chef. Oh, yeah. Just can that bowl get moved so we can see the chicken? You want to see the chicken? What you're doing on it? Oh, we should be getting overhead shots, but if you move the bowl. Oh, there's bowls? Yes, get that out of here. Get it out of here. We don't want to look at it, Chef. And, <laughs> and then we have another question here. How many does your restaurant seat? My seat serves 25 comfortably. 25. Um, when I do holiday parties, it kind of bumps up to 27 which in the month of december i'm pretty fully booked out so it uh it depends you know um but always 25 and everybody's comfortable and happy uh wheelchair access i've got walker access i've got a lot of uh access for folks to come in and uh um yeah i'm just just happy to have people in my building you know it's like it's fun you know especially when you come in my building and you've never been there and you I don't have salt and pepper on my table, so when you go in there and you can't taste the salt or pepper and you ask for it, I'm going to play salt and pepper on the radio, so everybody's going <laughs> to, and I'm going to call you out, because that song, Salt and Pepper's here, so it's, it's, it's pretty funny what I do, you know, and we have a lot of fun there, and I, you know, I, I have very few regulars, you know, which I'm, which I'm to say it's not a bad thing, but I definitely can get more people in being a destination than a location, if I can say that uh, humbly, because I am a destination. I get folks that land at SeaTac call me, hey, can you get us in? Yeah. You know, where a lot of places you want to go to, they have regulars that take up the seating, which I understand that the locals need places to go, you know, for the regular breakfast spots. But, you know, I'm a, 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 I'm a little more high-end. You know, I'm not in the price bracket as most restaurants for breakfast. That's why I do reservations. Because I give you real quality food. Not to say they don't, but I'm just up one more level than that. Like, I serve lobster at my restaurant. You know, Dungeness crab. You know, um, the best the best of the best I can make. Candied bacon. You know, so for me to, to cook those things is, uh, is kind of uh, fun. All right, so everybody see that? 
We see it. All right, so now we're about to start the process of rolling. So I'm going to move this up. We're looking for ingredients. So this is just regular flour. Now, when you do the gluten-free variant, you want to use rice flour. Okay. So glutinous rice flour is what you're looking for. That way you don't have to have gluten. This is regular panko, Japanese breadcrumbs. Now, they do make gluten-free breadcrumbs, and also it's rice panko. So if you're doing this... You can make that for your guests that are gluten intolerant, and they will love you. <laughs> be like, what? You made this? I'm like, yeah. It's the little things in life, you know? So these are regular farm fresh eggs. And I'm just, the reason I did all these ingredients to show you that all these ingredients come from a store, yep. a normal store, nothing fancy. You know, your local local store. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack some eggs because we're going to make a, a breading station. So I can crack one-handed, okay? Don't be jealous. Can you crack one-handed with both hands at the same time? I can, but I'm not going to. <laughs> we have a question here. Oh, vegans don't eat eggs. What would they use? I'm sorry? Vegans don't eat eggs. What would they use? No eggs. Or chicken. Or cheese. Or chicken, or cheese, or, or dairy. Or butter sauce. This yeah. is not the vegan's dish, guys. Yeah. This is, <laughs> there is not one thing about it. <laughs> Don't eat the eggs. <laughs> Gluten-free we can do. Vegan, you're out of luck, guys. Yeah, I have I'm a doing, question, question back here as well. I'm doing chicken cordon bleu. It could be. I don't think I can make eggplant cordon bleu. Oh. Hold on. We, just, we have someone who wants to say a word. Okay. So if any of you haven't been to Sean's restaurant, oh, hey. be sure you uh, take the time because it's the best brunch. It's the best. I mean, Aww. it's so good. And I've bought gift certificates to give to friends. And I used to own a catering business. I'm a pretty good cook, <laughs> but he's the best in the hood for sure. No, man. You heard it here, guys. Oh, man. God. Do you I pay heard you? it here. Do I pay you now or later? I only, bought, <laughs> I only brought $11. <laughs> Thank you very much. Who was that young lady? I can't see. What is your name and where are you from? If, Deborah. 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 Hi. I've been You've seen her around. Well, I appreciate you. So do all these people. <laughs> You're going to be on my payroll. you got to wait a week. <laughs> Social, uh, address, name, email. I'll get you all set up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See how easy that is to make you money? You can't plan those things. <laughs> no. You're getting coffee. You're getting <laughs> shout-outs over here, Chef. <laughs> ah, I'm just grateful. All right, so we got a, we got a fresh pair of gloves on. No chicken, no uh, vegan animal proteins has touched this yet. So, um, anyways, I got my eggs in a bowl here. So, and you don't need a lot of flour, a lot of eggs to do these. So, we're just going to whisk these up real quick. And you can whisk them with a fork, a spoon, whatever you got. You don't need a fancy whisk. All right. And if you folks, this is a... Uh, Fresh dried parsley, I made it uh, yesterday. Uh, you could buy the dried parsley in the store and just put it in if you wanted to. So I just like a little color when I fry. So we're just going to add that, and then we're going to mix it up. Fry. Is panko the traditional breadcrumb you'd use for this recipe, or is it this is. just one you like? It is. I mean, you can get the other breadcrumbs, the uh, like the shake and bake, I want to say. I don't... I don't really deal with those a lot, you know, um, 
those are for quick fries, you know, like if you want to, if you have a deep fryer, I don't have a deep fryer, so um, I've always used this method, you know. You can make your own breadcrumbs. It takes about four hours, start to finish. Uh, there's recipes all over if you want to make your own breadcrumbs. I'm not a fan because everything to us chefs is time, you know. So, I mean, it's not that we shortcut, but I don't think anybody cares for a fine breadcrumb, you know. And if you do, dude, I'll make it with you. Just <laughs> You just have to do it on video while I'm working. Love it. So we're going to go ahead and roll these chicken up. We got a good shot of that on the screen there. So biggest thing is just tuck in your ends a little bit. You don't have to tuck them in all the way. You know, this breading will coat pretty much all this. You made that look easy, Chef. There was no wrestling with it or anything. Well, I talked to the, when I bought this chicken at Safeway, I talked to it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it was the only passenger in my car, so I wanted to make sure we understood that they will roll right, not I left. I love it. They got to roll right, not left. <laughs> so what we're going to do is just going to uh, roll it in the flour. Again, this you could do the same thing with rice flour and rice panko to make it gluten-free. So we got that in there. Then we're going to do our, this is a typical egg wash station. So anytime you want to bread something, uh, onion rings, anything like that, you can uh, use this method and it breads everything. We have so another can, question for you, Chef. Go ahead. So you flour, then egg, then breading. Is it, what's, what's the purpose of each layer? Uh, each layer, it's uh, it's just the consistency of it. So you go flour, wet, dry, and that's the stick method. You know, I am not one of those chefs that went to school that has to learn every single uh, term or why it does it. I just know it works. That's why people <laughs> like me. <laughs> I'm not the fan. I'm not going to give you fancy words. Easy. <laughs> Sorry, if we know it works, that's enough. Yeah, and we're all home cooks. I'm sure a lot of all of us own a, a high-end restaurant so you know i'm like you i just this is what i the way i was raised and taught you know i'm just a line cook from tacoma i tie my shoes the same way <laughs> and then if you have flower spots you could just dip it in the egg one more time and then back in the panko So now we have two breaded chicken. Now, you can fill those with anything you want. You could do chicken keeve, which is rice and broccoli. You can uh, do a bunch of other variations. Um, I just picked this because this looked like fun today. <laughs> I mean, I don't serve this at my restaurant, but I was craving it a couple weeks ago. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make that so I can eat it. That's, sometimes that's all it takes, right? Like, you know what sounds good? So our oil has already been hot, so we heated that up, and that was just a little bit of canola oil. So all we're going to do is pan fry both sides. So we just want to make sure that when we add the chicken to the oil, it sears already. Can you folks see that? Can you see the sear on that yet? Yeah, we can see it. We got it. It's okay. a doing a little sizzle, sizzle. That's all you need. And, again, we're not cooking this in a ton of oil like in a deep fryer or anything like that. Because I don't like a lot of oily foods, if that makes sense. You know, we can get French fries anywhere. And thank you to the guy who made the French fry, you know. Oh, there's a nice shot of it sizzling right there, folks, on the screen. So how long would you sear these for, Chef? Uh, I'm going to sear it on both sides for about uh, three minutes on one, two on the other. I just want to get that nice golden look. And then we're going to go right into the oven. So the oven is already set at 350, 350, 350 degrees, which a lot of people don't understand is that's your basic temperature for everything you cook. 
I know you'll go, you'll buy pizzas, you'll buy that. It'll tell you 475 or 425. It's like, why? Because all you're going to do is get that oven so hot that it's going to burn your food. You know, people ask me, how long does it take you to cook a prime rib? I can get a prime rib this big, and it only takes two hours at 350. That's it. Two hours at 350. And that, that thing weighs about 8, 10 pounds. You know, you don't have, it's not pound per, per unit. It's cooking time, like a turkey. 25-pound turkey will take you two hours to cook. Two. Wow. You know, and it'll tempt to 165, you know. That's it. It's simple. But there you have it. folks read these recipes and all these things, and it's just people don't tell the truth. It's like, oh, I don't want dry food. <laughs> 350. That's it. Now, Chef, Ms. Tacoma Roma, who you pointed out earlier, mm-hmm. uh, she mentioned that you do some special things over the holidays for folks. You know, I do. Um for me, my restaurant was a gift to me by somebody else. Um, two years before I, actually not two years, one year before, actually one month before I opened my restaurant, uh, the, uh, the Lord needed my mother. So I took all the money I had. I gave her what the best service a son can give his best friend, and I was broke. So told everybody that... Uh, I can't open my restaurant. All my money went to my mom, which any son would do that. Um, a friend of mine reached out a month and a half later and says, Hey, Sean, it's uh, Jeremy. I haven't talked to you in 25 years. Hey, how much would it cost you to open that little cafe? And uh, I was like, don't mess with me. He's like, no, I'm serious. I was like, um, all right. So I gave him a number, and he kept me a check, said don't pay him back. So with somebody else's blessing who believed in me as a line cook, not a chef, and I achieved the impossible. So I opened. Sue Kid gave me the best write-up ever, and I was busy. So from starting <laughs> in March seventh, so from starting in <laughs> March seventh, when she wrote that article, that's you know R.I.P. to Sue Kid, our uh, uh, the last food writer for the News Tribune. Um, great woman. She uh, put me on the map. So I was I was grateful. Um, hold that thought. Holding. So right now we are at the point where we can see how beautiful that looks. Even though that's done, we're not going to eat it yet. We're going to pop it in the oven down here. So it's in the oven. The oven's been preheated. We are going to set a time. And we're going to put it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 350. 20 minutes, 350. So, anyway, so I was grateful for uh, what Sue Kid did. Um, for me, I loved all the, the people, all the, the new faces I seen coming in. I was busy. You know, me, I knew nothing about business, nothing about money at all. And um, so the first Mother's Day that year in May, I noticed I had quite a bit of money in the, uh, the bank account. And I put a blast on Facebook saying that I want to feed um, 100 people for free um, to give back to my mother and honor her. And I did. I fed 100 people, and I was blessed. I was happy. I was uh, grateful. And... Uh, it felt good, you know, just feeding people. And the next next week, I got a check from uh, a place called the DOR, uh, the Department of Revenue. And so I called my accountant because I was on quarterlies, and I don't know anything about that back then. <laughs> uh, I was like, hey, I got a letter from the DOR. Who are these people, and why do they want $3,000 for? And my accountant says, well, Sean, you have to give 10% of sales. I was like, Why? It's like, that should be my money. They're like, no, you got to pay. She's like, don't worry, I'll pay them tomorrow. And I'm like, well, you can't. I spent all the money. 
And she says, no worries. We'll, uh, we'll start doing payment plans. I was like, I don't want to do payment plans. And she starts laughing. And uh, so I walked around my restaurant for two days praying, thinking what to do because after I fed all those wonderful moms, I'm broke again. Like, man, I can't, I can't do this. So I went next door. I had an epiphany, and I told Tony, the owner of uh, Little Jerry's, who sold me the, uh, uh, the restaurant, I was like, hey, I'm going to do breakfast. Would that be okay? And he said, yeah, there, there should be enough room in here for the both of us. I was like, look, I'm not going to do anything you do. You know, you're a great greasy spoon breath- breakfast. You hold that title for best breakfast, best greasy spoon in Tacoma. I'm going to do high-end breakfast, and I'm going reservation only. Everybody told me, good luck, good luck. You know, uh, you're not going to make it. You know, uh, you don't do what everybody else does. And uh, me being Alaskan native, I'm, uh, I've always been resilient. I've always done the right thing. So I went ahead and I launched, and people would try to get in my restaurant. This is back in 2017. This is almost seven years ago. People would try to get in my restaurant, and I'd tell them I can't do it. I'm already fully booked out. I'm a reservation only. No reservation. I can't get you in. So for me, I hate to say it, but I lied to the good folks about that I couldn't get them in that day. <laughs> I did that for a month and a half. That next month, I, I made $27,000, paid everything back, and after that, it just took off. I had all the food bloggers from all over the world. I had write-ups, and you know, for me to do this with a kitchen no bigger than this, it's, it's the biggest blessing, and to this day, I have not changed a thing. It's still two campfire burners. It's still a little oven, and it's still, you know, I'll feed 140 people every single day on the weekend. So I'll rock out 280 people every Saturday, every Sunday, and it's busy, you know, and it's fun. I mean, if you look at the reviews, you know, Google, Yelp, you know, you'll, you'll see it. You know, and yeah, I got a few non-like reviews on there, but for me, everybody's welcome to write me a review. It's like whatever. I don't, <laughs> I don't fall into that. It's like we live in the day and age where, where you have to follow somebody or like their page or, you know, it's like me. I don't, I don't, I don't fall into that anymore. Mm. You know, it's like I used to, you know, back in the days, but now I don't, I don't care. It's like I don't care if you follow. I don't care if you like. I'm not looking for this massive gain of 15 million followers. <laughs> I'm me. You're in my restaurant right there. You're action. I'm action. Let's make it happen. That's my motto. I want to serve beautiful food to beautiful people now. You know what I mean? I don't do to-go food. You can't come in there and order something to go. It's not going to happen. I don't, I don't, I don't, I want to serve quality food. If you give me your time, I'm giving you all my time in my restaurant. All I ask is you make a reservation. Guess what? You're in. (laughs) Please love it. Call me. So. Give him a call. Pop in there. So when it comes to this dish, what sides would you recommend? On this one, I would do uh, pretty much a, a, a potato dish. Really good. It would go really good over rice. You know, it, it just depends. There's so many different uh, pastas and carbs you can do. You know, it just depends on your mood of what you want to do. Um, for me, I didn't bring anything to, uh, to accompany this. Um, I do have a raw onion here. If anybody has raw onion, they can do that. Just bite right into it. Yeah. And that's it. But. So while the chicken is baking, are we going to make our delicious sauce? Yeah, but you folks aren't going to like me very much. Uh-oh. Yep. I'm human. I make mistakes. And uh, my heavy cream did not make it to us today. So. You know? Nope, we're going to be doing just a uh, butter wine sauce today. That's okay. And I, again, I am human. I bleed just like you, even though everybody's <laughs> like, dude, you're great. I'm like, I know. But I, <laughs> I forgot something. And I mean, you can be great and also yeah. forget an ingredient. <laughs> yeah. That is, again, the joys of the demo kitchen. Just never know. Uh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, unless, unless Smith Brother Farms has some heavy cream in their booth. <laughs> if somebody wants to go to Smith Brothers and see if they have any Is that, is cream, that a haul? Is that quite a trick? No, they're here. Oh, I know, but where? I don't here know. Here is big, Chef. I know. <laughs> Smith Brothers, bring me some heavy cream. Bat signal. <laughs> we need dairy. <laughs> but other than that, it's okay. We'll still, we'll still make it work. and It'll taste just as good. It'll be tasty.
So how many of you worked in restaurants before? Whoa, really? Do you still work in them? Why? <laughs> Dude, restaurants are... You want to know why I stopped working in a restaurant? Yes, Jackie, why? I was getting cranky, chef. Really? You? I was the cranky elderly bartender, and oh. I thought, I got to go. Where did you work? <laughs> Where didn't I work? You tell us. If you've drank in Tacoma, I probably made you a cocktail at some point in time. Uh, I did. I, <laughs> I, I was a horrible... I'm I'm sure One. I have I have made many beverages over many places, but I've been out of the game for a minute, and now I get to just support local chefs and and food lovers and do this. Nice, yeah. By the way, I love when Jackie reaches out to us, you know, and says, "Hey, you in?" I'm like, "Yeah." It's that time of year again, chef. Yeah. I love it too. It, it just gives me. I'm like, we get to do this again. Oh, did anyone catch the car? If you're blocking the H gate, you better skedaddle. The H gate. So what's in our pan, Chef? Uh, I just put some uh, some white onions I reduced with uh, white wine. I added some roasted garlic. And I'm just going to let this butter melt on its own. Then I'm going to add some Dijon, salt and pepper. And we're going to put this on the bottom of the chicken cordon bleu. And guess what? You're going to be like, whoa. And I'm going to be like, what? <laughs> I love it. Is this salted or unsalted butter? Oh, it's unsalted. I don't, uh, I don't do salted butter uh, too much um, because I want to be able to control the salt intake. Yep. You know, and if I can't control the salt intake, then it could be too salty. Because let's say we make soup. Soup takes about an hour to really um, um, blossom to full flavor. So if you do it too prematurely, you can have a real salty soup. Example, if you put ham in a split pea soup, you're going to get it real salty. You know, and if you didn't know that, it, ham really super salts that soup up. Um, so that's when you just add a few potatoes in there. Um, take out the salt um, because potatoes absorb salt. Love it. Chef, I have a question here. Go. If you were to add the cream, how much cream would you add? If I was to add the cream right now, I would add one cup. One, One cup, cup of cream. Because you want to match that to the wine. Um, and it's okay, again, you know, I mean, it's going to taste good. All of those things together sound tasty to me. Right? All right, so we're just under 11 minutes. Perfect. Oh, I have a question in the front. I'm coming. I'm going to get my steps in today. I like it. I looked at your website, and I noticed that uh, you do a lot of the candied bacon. Mm -hmm. Is that because it adds the sweet salty to it, or mm -hmm. what does it bring to the, the plate? Uh, it, it, I like the, the sweet and savory taste. You know, a lot of places will cook just the regular way where uh, it's just no sweeting. It's just savory, you know. Where me, my taste palate is different than most, where I like, I like it all. I like sweet, savory. I like my mouth to taste a lot of different things. So at my, my menu, with my six items on my menu, it's just layering of flavors. I want you to taste something here. I want you to taste something over here. You know, a lot of places I go where, you know, no offense, it just all tastes the same. It's like I'm just shoveling the same thing in my mouth. It's like boring. So I just like a lot of flavors to pop. You know, it's like if you add a lot of heat, um, if you like something really hot, you're not going to taste anything mm -hmm. but that pepper you know, that you're using. And I can't eat with just tasting one item because it's too hot. So then all I'm tasting is water, you know, or that glass of milk because it's too hot. <laughs> but, you know, but a lot of people love the different uh, um, the different peppers. I can't do it. I need to taste everything, you know. Um, but you've worked in the kitchen. What's your, what's your favorite thing that you made? Oh, I'm coming up. I want to hear. It was frog legs. <laughs> what you make? Frog legs. Frog legs. Wow. <laughs> Man, we got some frog legs at Wapato. Hey. You want to you wanna roll down oh, there and grab me a couple? Oh, not the Wapato frogs. Come <laughs> on, chef. <laughs> that's all that's there is frogs at Wapato. I remember hunting for them when I was nine years old. Wapato frogs. <laughs> 
It's a great park, for sure. It is. It's a part of me. So with a limited menu like you have, what is the one thing that is just the most popular? What's the? Th- I mean, they're all amazing, but is there one that people just keep coming back for more? Uh, my French toast is a big hit because it's this tall, um, <laughs> full of flavor. Um, and then I have my lobster bomb, of course. Yeah. Um, which is really super tasty. If you like eggs Benedict, you'll love my lobster bomb. Yeah. Um, and I can do that without the bread bowl. You know, people ask me, why do you use the bread bowl? And for me, it's something different than what everybody else does. Like, when I was a line cook at other restaurants, I, I did not like making toast. Toast and nachos were <laughs> my big, oh, I don't like my job right now. Because oh. I didn't like doing toast. Okay. You know, it's toast. It's... Trust me, when you got a hundred people, and you got to make toast for them, oh, yeah, I guess man. it gets old real fast. It does, and then they complain about toast. It's not <laughs> toasted enough, and then you got that on your mind all day because as people that worked in restaurants and people that cook at home, you could have a million compliments. That one person, that one person sticks with you. Man, they didn't like my bread. It wasn't toasted enough, <laughs> or they want burnt toast. I know some of you like burnt toast. And it's like, oh, burnt toast. Okay, you start pointing fingers. I heard yeah. somebody. And me, when I burnt the toast, oh, I just scrape. <laughs> like, yeah, you wouldn't even know. It's just extra crispy. Yeah. You know? It's fine. Yeah. Nachos? No. No. My uh, motto is don't yuck someone else's yum. Yes. You like burnt toast? Go to town. Have yes. fun. I'm not going to eat it, though. And one thing about me, if you don't know, if I, I do a lot of house caters where people will hire me to come cook at their house and cook for them, I will go through your whole kitchen, <laughs> just so you know. So right now, I'm going to go through this whole kitchen. Open the drawers. Dude, I didn't know you had all this fancy stuff in here. Shh, don't tell anyone. Dude. <laughs> Look at these. You know? I could use all this at my restaurant. <laughs> all of it. We just have them just in case the chef, you guys, sometimes you need it. You're like, oh, I need a measuring cup. Right. Although I don't know many chefs who actually ask for a measuring cup. You guys eyeball everything. Yeah, yeah. We, we do. You know, but we train our staff, our cooks, to use measuring cups until they get that eye. Like me, I make my, uh, my own in-house uh, gluten-free cornbread mix. And uh, my guy this weekend, he would just go over to the sink and fill it up with water, go back, mix it up, go back to the sink, fill it up with water, come back, mix it up. I'm like, look, I got it broke down here. It's three cups, three cups. And nope, (laughs) nope. I was like, it took you 10 minutes to make that. Why can't you just do that? Nope, wasn't happening, so. Always learning, Chef. Always. Do we have any questions for Chef? You have his attention. All right. Oh, yes. Sometimes you just have the pregnant pause. You got to wait. It comes. So I know this is a very non vegetarian centric dish. Sure. But if you had to work with meat alternatives, what would be your favorite? Meat alternatives? I like mushrooms. I'm a mushroom guy, I'm a fun guy. Hey. <laughs> what about tofu, tempeh? To- what tofu, about it's, it's a, it's a, I can work with tofu. I've done it a long time, but it's like lots of folks with mushroom texture. They don't, they don't like it, you know. And for me, I've always been about texture, mushrooms. But tofu, for no, not really. I mean, like for me, I like to do eggplant parmesan, for instance, for vegetarians. And vegans um, alike, I love doing eggplant parmesan, Mm -hmm. you know. um, I just don't tell them I dip it in egg wash, you know, and they're okay with that. They don't know, you know. (laughs) It's like a cookie, you know. Can you eat that cookie? You're a vegan. Do you ever work with things like the Beyond or Impossible kind of things? The what? Like Beyond Burger or Impossible? I do. I like the Impossible Burgers. Those are are good. They're tasty. They're solid these days. A lot of people don't understand is that when you get a burger... You're not eating the burger, you're eating the sauce. Sauce is everything. You know You know what I just found out that just clicked finally after a long time? And no knock to, uh, to Chick-fil-A, but uh, their fry sauce, it's coleslaw dressing. <laughs> Did you know that? 
Chick Fil A sauce is coleslaw dressing. Now you know. Because I, I tested that. I was like, "What am I eating?" And I was like, "I know this taste." So I went in my kitchen. I grabbed some mayonnaise. I grabbed some apple cider vinegar, some sugar, and I whisked it up. And I put my fry in there. Oh my God. <laughs> what? So, if you don't order extra Chick Fil A sauce, you can make it out of your own kitchen. You're welcome. Fast food secrets. Put that one in your pocket, guys. I like this, but it doesn't seem to work. Well, that's no good. Is there another one in there? Oh, probably. (laughs) Oh, we even got a close-up shot of the tools. Oh, poking around here, poking around there. Always. Like he said, he's going to go through your drawers, guys, okay? Invite Sean over, tidy up that junk drawer real quick. And how do you folks feel about this Christmas music? Are we emotionally prepared? (laughs) It is early. We're getting the... It feels early. It feels a little early. So this is just some regular Dijon. We're going to go ahead and finish up because we're just about there. We're at two minutes. Two minutes. Are you guys excited? Whoop, whoop. More whoop, whoops. I like it. There's nothing worse. And you're like, how are you guys feeling? And you get nothing. You think, wow, we're going to have fun, guys. And last year they didn't have forks, they had spoons, but this year they have forks and no spoons. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was, okay. That was a nod of approval, a little more seasoning. So once these are done, in a couple minutes I'm going to cut them right in half. That way you can see what the uh, insides look like. Um, And keep in mind that when you pound it out... You're only cooking this much of the chicken all the way around it, so it actually cooks a lot faster. Mm. And keep in mind that when you microwave something, microwaves work from the outside in, or ovens work from the uh, or from the inside outside microwaves, but ovens work from uh, outside in. So that's why it takes longer to cook something. Are we getting any aromas out here, guys? Maybe in the front row. Oh, oh. Are we able to get a shot of that golden brown goodness? Look at it. Hey. So as we can tell, the cheese did not come out. It's still intact. That's because you're a master roller, Sean. Yeah. Oh, we got a question in the front. Would you recommend other cheeses in here? Yeah, you could put brie in there. You could put gorgonzola in there. Um, this is just your typical um, cordon bleu. So, but you can add different, so many different variations of cheese. You know, like I said, you could put bacon in there, ham, Canadian bacon, uh, whatever you have in your fridge can go inside this. I love it. And a question here. Okay, my question is since. You said the microwave cooks from the inside out and the oven outside in. Mm-hmm. You've already crisped the outside. Could you finish cooking it in the microwave? You could, yes. Is there a microwave here that works? I, I believe so. Is this a microwave? I, you know? It looks like a microwave. <laughs> I believe so. I like to test out this kitchen, so let's test it out. Just don't put any metal in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's a different kitchen every year. So even our return chefs, they get they get to poke around a little bit and see where's what and what's where. Test it out here. Let's poke around a little bit, guys. Touch. Renewal, remodel and additions. Even put up this nice little backsplash, which gives me a little envy at my house. I feel like... I need an upgrade, and I think they did that on purpose. Has anybody used the microwave yet here? No, sir. Okay, so we're going to hit it for two minutes. That should be enough. 
Any other questions for Chef? All right. All right. Is what? that a, do you need a question? Oh, a lot of, how many gloves are you going through? Well, he's keeping for, us safe. For me, it's always about food safety. You know, um, I've worked with uh, chefs and not saying any names that <laughs> they don't change their gloves. You know, it's like you have to continuously change them because, you know, you don't know what you have on there. Me, I want to keep everybody safe. So, yeah, gloves are expensive, but it's, it's your safety I'm worried about. You know, I'm okay because I'm not going to eat the food you are. So if my hands aren't always changing and always clean, then it's on my mind like, oh, my gosh, I didn't change my gloves for a half hour. I fed those ladies that. Oh, no, are they going to write me a review? I hope they're okay. Chef, we have a recommendation out here. Go ahead. Who's singing? <laughs> We're like, have you been on a cooking show? No. And why not? We got to get you on there. Oh, uh, because I don't. But it's not about <laughs> anything but, but what we're doing. It's like I said. It's like I'm here now. All about the love. You know, you're here now. I mean, it's this is fun. So we're at uh, 18 seconds. 18 seconds. So as soon as that comes off, guess what? You get to eat. I love it. Are we going to close the presentation with the slicing open? Yeah. I love it. I want to get that nice final shot before we get in the line, guys. Once there's a line, there's no more good shots. There's just... you. Does that microwave work? Oh, yeah. We're hey. Great. And as you can see, our cheese is still intact. Nice. You can see it's starting done. to melt a little bit. But as soon as we cut this... And you can still see there's natural juices in there, which is good. Because you don't want dry food. Nobody likes dry. So what we're going to do is put this here. And you always want a sharp knife, so make sure your knives are sharp. Do you have a preference on brand or type of knife? No, just as long as it's sharp. Sharp. So what we'll do is we'll cut it in half. And that way you folks can see. Get a little peekaboo. The inside. Are you able to get a shot of the layers on the big screen? Wait, don't move it, chef. There it is. Look at that. Let's give an applause for that thing of beauty. All right. Any other questions for chef? And you can still see the cheese oozing out right here and here. So. That's the good stuff. Chef, any final thoughts? Uh, you folks are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to take my non-heavy cream sauce here. <laughs> Just a little love. Oh, and you know those garlic bits are like chef's kiss right there. Is Deborah still here? She's my number one fan. I don't think so. She she really just swooped <laughs> in to sing your graces and then she left. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to cut a little bit for everybody here. Some people might not get the ham, some people might. You'll get some of those flavors, though. Now, general rule of thumb, before you guys get samples, I have to take Chef's picture. Oh, look at that. That is lovely. Oh, can we get a shot of that? Is it pointing the wrong way? Oh, there we go. We can see it. Ooh, hey. You're making us hungry. Well, except the vegans. I'm sorry. We have vegans in the audience? How many vegans we have? One today. We did have salad just before this. You did? We did, yeah. Well, I want salad. 
It was a pretty salad. We're just getting it all on there. Oh, yeah. Look Do you at have a that. spoon? Well, there's maybe a, a metal spoon around somewhere. <laughs> and one of those drawers you were poking around. Oh, for my vegan friend. Oh. Uh, I'll give her one piece of garlic. <laughs> Always looking out, Chef. Always looking out. Wonderful. Let's get a look at that final dish right there, guys. Chicken cordon bleu with Chef Sean Tibbetts. Let's give it Thank up you. for Chef. Make a little line and we'll get you some snacks. Yes, snacks. Uh, do we have plates? We do. 